before we start watching all the cat's eye things, can we please talk about Pop Star Academy? I did my reactions and I said a lot of things, but I want to hear what everyone else had to say. All of your feelings about all of it, like the series, how it was done, how they were training, and then it went into the survival show and what that whole process was. Which girls were your favorite? Which girls did you really like? Which girls did you not like? Which girls do you think shouldn't have been eliminated? eliminated when they were or whatever the missions the performances how those went and like what you thought about it the drama all the drama can we talk about all the drama and the way it was edited too like i don't even feel like it was all that much drama but the editing was so shady it made some of them look so bad or it made it look so much more intense than i think it probably even was just like you know reality tv or whatever you heard a snippet of adela's song and it sounds so good that's exciting she's a really great performer so i hope the music is good if the music is good with her performance ability then i think she'll do really well I think it was a bad idea to release it and solo stands were victimizing Manon when they were all victims. Yeah, I don't think it was a bad idea to release it. Overall, their goal was to market Cat's Eye and get people talking. And they did that, right? Regardless of whether or not they're having good conversations or bad conversations, everyone is talking about Cat's Eye and everyone is like, even people debating back and forth in the comment section, like as far as the company's concerned, all of that is good. No press is bad press, right? People have like really strong feelings about Manon either loving her or completely villainizing her. I don't think she deserves any of it. Like, not that she doesn't deserve love, but you know what I mean? Like that level of blind adoration or blind hatred. I don't think anybody deserves that. Like she's just, she is a human being like all of us are. And she was young. She was put into a situation that she's never been in before. She didn't have any experience with that world at all. She didn't have any training. And she got like thrown in after the fact, like they were training her on her own back home before they brought her into the company. And like, I don't know, that just seems like you're setting her up to be the new girl in school. You know what I mean? Like that's always going to be hard. It doesn't matter if you're really great or you're not great you're the one new girl to come in like hey what's up some girls were painted as bullies by haters and the public yeah i think people are having like really strong reactions to that naisha commented on lara's instagram saying that she's holding it down for the brown girls and she may have to hold it down for the black girls as well that so a lot of people were talking about how naisha was really shady and i didn't know why i didn't know what was really shady but that is that's very like specific like, like that's pointed hey that black girl is not doing it so you're gonna have to hold it down for the black girls that's rude uh, sorry that's rude okay no i get it that's rude lara and manon cleared it up on tiktok i have seen that i mean i haven't seen the tiktok i've seen people commenting saying that they posted a tiktok together we'll watch that let's watch that tonight sabrina i think that's a really really good point i don't think it's great for mental health of girls to release any content that would make people feel negatively towards them and that for me is kind of the biggest issue that i have that is already an issue i have with all entertainment if you are like an entertainment figure a public figure in any way especially if you are a very young public figure especially if you are a very young public figure who is being subjected to fame by the company or the label behind you you have no experience the entire team of adults around you do have experience and they do know how the internet works they do know how fandoms work and they are the ones who are intentionally putting you in this situation that's my issue that i don't like i think that is like i think there's a certain point where people can make a decision for themselves whether or not they want to be subjected to that. I don't think these girls were prepared for that. And I don't think they made like conscientious, mindful decisions about how they were going to be put in the public eye and what was going to be displayed and what I guess how they were going to be presented. And that sucks. That sucks to be like, I just, oh my God, I just wanted to sing and dance. Like I just wanted to 
be on stage and sing and dance and be an idol. And I know that fame is part of it, but like, whoa, this is intense. I don't think that's fair. Even you saw how much it was affecting them. Just the comments when they went public and it was announced that it was a survival show and people were making comments on the missions. And like for the first time ever, you have the entire world talking about you and they're commenting on your body and they're commenting on how you look and your face and your if you were cool enough. Like it's just like, whoa, that's intense. But then something like this series where people are taking things that you said and they're putting it totally out of context or they're creating a narrative that's going to make you look like a bully or it's going to make you look lazy and you don't care and you don't try like that's just I don't know that sucks I think that sucks I think Naisha is very bitter I guess so and who knows I think that comment was made maybe right when the group was announced the lineup was announced maybe she was very bitter Maybe she's no longer very bitter. Maybe she's had time to process. I don't know. Maybe she's been working through those big feelings because it was a very, very dramatic environment for them to be in. And her exit from the situation to all the other girls at least being eliminated. Wait, mm, that second elimination was also very traumatic. But at least with the eliminations, like you have this idea of like, I could go home today. You're kind of mentally preparing for the fact that, OK, this is a competition. And if I don't get enough votes or I don't get enough points, I might go home. And that like her, I think it was so drastic and abrupt and unexpected. She probably did not really get to process it the way that she needed to. So I would not be surprised at all if months later she was still bitter about it. I get it. I get it. Lara immediately unfollowed her. Wow. Anna, I think villainizing girls over things that happened two years ago is a bit much. I agree. Honey child, welcome, by the way. I feel like Naisha only said that because of what Adela was telling her. Because you see, before Naisha left, her and Menon had a good relationship unless she was being fake. Even that, I don't know. Like, I don't think anybody was being fake at any point throughout the show. You saw the girls getting along in certain scenes and then being really frustrated with each other in other scenes. And that's real. I think even when you are... Hi, Andrew. Thank you for the follow. I think even when you're in a situation where like somebody is frustrating you you also live with them you have to work with them every single day you're eating your meals together you're like spending your downtime together you're always together it's exhausting to like be mad at someone 24 7 you know what i mean so you're gonna be like let's get along let's try to make this work let's have a good relationship and someone commented on my video that a lot of the comments that we saw from the girls like being really irritated and angry and like annoyed with Manon was happening while they were talking to the therapist. It's like, hey, here's an environment where it is supposed to be safe for you to just like what's on your chest. Let's talk about it. Let's get it out. Like air your grievances. It doesn't mean that what you say in this moment is like the entirety of who you are or what you think or what you feel. That's the purpose of this space. What are the things that are bothering you or frustrating you? Let's get Get it out in the open and let's talk through it so we can move past it. That is the point of talking with a mental health professional. So to take that and then frame it as though that is the entire narrative and put that out on Netflix for the whole world to see, I'm like genuinely so bothered by that. Yes, of course, they all knew that there was a documentary series being created. They all knew that everything they did or said was being filmed and could be put on TV. But is it not super unethical to be like, hey, let's have you talk with a mental health professional to like work through the difficult feelings that you're having. And then we're going to take just those specific clips and put them on TV so that everyone thinks that's just the entirety of your relationship with Manon. It bothered me, y'all. It bothered me so much. <laughs> Oh, it bothered me so much. And who knows? Maybe it wasn't like an official therapy session, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be an official therapy session. You've created what you have told us is a safe space. And then you made it the most unsafe thing ever. Like, how am I ever going to trust being able to open up to a therapist or a counselor or anyone ever again without feeling like this is going to be turned against me and everyone's going to hate me for what I say here? It bothered me so much.
Y'all, I've had all these thoughts just sitting in my head for like a week. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm going to be rambling. I have so many thoughts. Ugh. The fact that Naisha felt the courage to even type that up is crazy, though. No, that's real. No matter how much she had not processed or she was having big feelings or whatever, I'm like, you went on the Internet. The Internet is out there for the whole world to see and it's never going to go away. Don't do that. Uh, don't do that. Uh, Benji, I think Adela had a right to be mad, but I don't know why she put her hatred on Manon when it wasn't her fault. And a lot of people were saying that. And I really think that I understand why people are bothered by it. But I'm like, that's where I think we can give all of them grace. I think all of the girls who were frustrated with Manon, they're not being frustrated or being angry because they're mean or they're bullies like they're just genuine people who are having emotions they're in a really stressful situation and they're having actual genuine emotions that are real to have and when you're in a situation like that and you're having like all this anger you want to place it somewhere and not everybody is able to sit back and be like let me reflect on what I'm feeling and what's at the root of this emotion and where is it supposed to be going and how do I work through it and who's at fault who's not at fault like in the moment it's especially when I'm sure their schedule was just go, 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 go like that. It's just going to come out. Sometimes it's going to come out on the wrong person or you're going to blame somebody for something that's not their fault or whatever. That's a thing that happens. And if you can recognize it later on and talk about it and work through it and heal together, then that's OK. That's OK. We don't have to be mad at people for just being human, I think. Anna said you posted it a couple times and I think my bot blocked it because you had the word misogyny, which apparently is a bad word. Anna said the elimination in which they showed who the girls would want in their debut group and using that as a way to eliminate the girls was so harsh, especially since they told them it would not be used against them. Elia's comments was a bit much, but I understand her reaction because at a certain point I would be fed up and she 100% knew she wasn't going to debut. Oh, you didn't even use the word misogyny. It just said eliminate the girls and the Twitch bot was like, you want to eliminate girls. That's hateful to women. Wow. Anyway, yes, I do agree. And I don't think that they necessarily used what the girls said to play into actually eliminations, but it just they planted that seed to make the girls think and feel like oh, the reason I got eliminated was because nobody wanted me here. I don't think they actually gave a shit what the girls thought about each other. They just knew it would stir up drama. And that is fucked up. All of it was so messed up. I hate it. Brooklyn's elimination was horrible. Benji, I agree. So traumatic. Like, why would you do that and even so we know there's always a lot of like tension and stress and they all want to make it like this big dramatic thing when there are eliminations happening we know that happens i really feel like the way that they did that it was just too much it was too far it was too far it was too much it was rude it was mean it was horrible Ugh. it was horrible Honey child, Adela was undeniably talented, but when you're building a global group full of diversity as a blonde white girl, you're going to have to do a lot more to stand out. And unfortunately, she couldn't. You know what? I have a lot of thoughts on that, too. I'm not going to say anything. Y'all tell me what you think. They're building a global group. Adela was a blonde white girl who was very, very talented. She got eliminated. Emily was a blonde white girl who was very, very talented, and she also ultimately did not make the group. I have thoughts and like theories, I guess. But y'all tell me because I saw some people commented commented that during the show they were watching and they were voting as well. And they like intentionally did not vote for the blonde white girls. So, yeah, I want to hear your thoughts before I go on another rant about that. <laughs> oh, Lord of mercy. Lagaya, exactly. It also happens in friendship. You get annoyed with your friends sometimes. You argue with your friends sometimes. Listen, in the 10 plus years that Reverse has been a group, we have been working together, creating music together, rehearsing together, traveling together, living together. We have been on top of each other, squish up, squish up on the couch for hours at a time. And of course, we've had arguments. Of course, we've had actual, real, serious conflict. That is a thing that happens. It doesn't mean we don't love each other. It doesn't mean we don't respect each other. It doesn't mean we don't value one another or think that we should be in a group together. That's just a thing. It's a thing that happens. Honey child, I was just going to say 
You said the first mission didn't help her stand out. Anyone from the dance groups in mission one placed high. I think mission one was kind of dumb. I don't like the way that they did it. Having two groups do vocals and two groups do dance. The idea was like, oh, it's going to show your strength. But I don't think they did because it's impossible to compare a dance performance to a vocal performance. It's like apples and oranges. What did you think about the scene where all the girls sat and had a talk? Uh, Missy telling Manon not to react was weird, but I understand. No, I did get it. I think overall, generally speaking, like if I am mediating a conflict, that is a key part of conflict mediation is when someone has a space to speak, like rather than reacting right away and kind of like immediately going on the defensive, you just listen, let them speak, let them share everything that they need to say. I don't think she was trying to shut Manon up. I think they edited it to make it look like she wasn't allowed to talk but it probably didn't go that way yeah there was more to it than we saw i personally liked adela and i wanted her in the lineup after seeing clips of her singing but i don't think the first mission did her justice at all yeah no i really don't i'm curious before the results who was your ideal debut group who would you choose yeah everybody put in the comments who especially if you were watching when the show was actually happening who were your top six for me Sophia, from the very beginning, was one of my top picks. Megan and Daniela, both of them by, I don't know, I think by the time they hit the survival show, they were already like high on my list for me. Lara, which because I saw the Still Into You performance before I watched the series, she was like very high on my list as well. Two more. Who would I have picked? I feel like Manon or Samara could have been it and it would have been one or the other. It could not have been both, unfortunately. Lagaya says, I don't know these girls, but I think the blonde white girls are part of the world's population. If they're talented enough, why not put them in the group? The historical problem is only when they do not deserve a spot and it could have gone to a deserving person of color. Ah, uh, yes. I do agree with that. I don't think like, no, we shouldn't have white people in the group because we want diversity and white people, boo. Like that's stupid because white people are also talented <laughs> and they also work hard and they also want it just as badly and they also deserve it. But I'm not surprised that they did not choose a blonde white girl for this group. Sabrina, I actually really like the current lineup best. Adela had too much influence over the other girls. They wouldn't have been equals. That's a good point. Ooh, because I've been thinking about all the different elements that go into choosing a lineup for a group. And I forgot about the personalities of the girls themselves. Yes, every group has a leader, but it can't feel like the leader has too much influence or too much sway over everyone else or has too strong of a personality where other girls are going to get lost. And I do feel like that might have happened with Adela, though. I don't know. I mean, they were all really close. They all loved each other and supported each other. So who knows? She's not like it's not like she's a decade older than them. She was like two years, three years older than some of the other girls. I don't know. My take on no true white girls making it into the group is because the main point of this group is diversity and inspiring young girls around the world that might not be re represented much in this industry into following their dreams. So that part I get. And that's why I'm not surprised that they didn't pick a blonde girl. Like they literally, they dyed Daniela's hair back to like her natural color and then they debuted her as a blonde blonde like light blonde i said in my reaction earlier i'm like if you saw the group and you didn't know anything about them you didn't know the girls at all you would think that daniela was a caucasian girl with natural blonde hair they still want that like western waspy appeal <laughs> They want to be able to sell to be like, look at this pretty white girl we have without actually having any like Caucasian blonde haired girls. But they wanted the representation. And I'm like, yeah, it's true. There are a million girl groups out there. There are a million solo artists out there who are blonde hair, blue eyes. We see so much of that all the time. We don't see other representation. So it's fair to be like, nah, not this time. Yeah, unfortunately for Adela and Emily, there's so many girls like them in the industry now. You can be super, super talented, but like you are one of many talented blonde haired, blue eyed girls in the world. Anna, I didn't have an exact group, but I knew for a fact that Daniela, Lara, Megan, most definitely, but Sophia as well, because she's so hardworking and has great leadership qualities and knows how to articulate herself very well. That's a great thing with Sophia. We saw it in the series too, the Netflix series, like every time she spoke and they 
specifically gave her moments where she had to like explain something or she was talking a lot earlier someone was asking about like media training like how do you know what to say in interviews or like how do you not stumble over your words and i'm like that is something that has to develop like that's a trained skill that sophia has and i think that's important for any group at least having one or two people who are just like really really good at speaking <laughs> But she also just has, yeah, really great, I don't know, great work ethic, great mentality, great energy about her. She's like generally very positive. She's generally very like self-actualized and really emotionally aware. I like her. Nayang, Lara, Daniela, Sophia, Megan, and Yunche. Benji, that's an interesting group. That would have been a strong group. Really talented. You have vocals, you have dance, you have visuals. You would have had two Korean idols. I don't think you would have had two Korean idols. I feel like having one black girl, one Latina girl, one Asian girl, one Indian girl, what two Asians, but like one is East Asian Korean and one is Filipino. Like they were very intentional, I think, about the representation that they've put into this group. So I don't think they would have had two Korean idols, but they definitely were going to have one. It was going to be one of them for sure. Safia, I really loved Megan when she was chosen despite not ra ranking top six. Me too. I was just so happy. Queen, Dorothy, and Megan, Daniela, Lara, Naya. Manon and then I didn't mind who took the sixth spot I I agree with that too absolutely I see that they're all just they're all really good I considered Samara to be a big contender solely because of her voice her dancing skill set definitely needed more work but she has a wonderful voice I agree Anna and I feel like it could have gone either way with her or Manon she had a great voice not great dance Manon doesn't have great either but she has good both and like she's improved and developed both so i feel like the potential for her to continue growing and continue developing is really really strong with her i think that's one reason that i'd be like okay let me lean in that direction i do feel like her presence her like it girl factor her social media presence all of that was a really strong sell for manon as well but samara is brazilian and in the same way that the Filipino community was really supportive of Sofia, the Brazilian fandom, they ride hard. So that could have gone in her favor, too. It could have gone either way. I really feel like it could have gone either way. Andrew H. Hi. Honestly, love the lineup now, but I think Marquis would have been a great seventh. Ooh, she could have been a seventh. Yes. I wouldn't take anyone out and replace them with her. But if they added her as a seventh member, that would have been really good. I see that. Uh, Sabrina said Samara is the only one who could have fit in the group. But after the whole scandal, as much as Brazil rides hard and even now, like even before this Netflix series comes out, my Dream Academy reactions would still get comments regularly of Brazilians commenting about Samara specifically because when I did my reaction, people were telling me about the drama with her scandal and they were like no she's just being hated on because people didn't want her to do well in the competition like they ride hard but as much as your fans will ride hard for you people who have issues with some of the things that you do or say online will equally hate you and it might be like it's not worth it for a debut group a rookie group that no one's seen before it's not worth it for us to like start off right away before they even debut with a scandal as a company i don't think they would have done that regardless of whether or not it was true regardless of whether or not she believes the things that people were saying she believes the company would be like mm, nah <laughs> no thank you we don't want it. Sophia, for example, she's the leader. She has a strong personality, but she also seems very supportive and doesn't have too much sway over the other girls. Yes. I think that's kind of the difference between, and again, I don't know them. So like, what do I know? But the difference that I can kind of see from Sophia and someone like Adela. Sophia is a great leader, but she also seems like super, super open to just hearing what other people have to say. And like, mm, no, she did have pretty strong opinions and she was saying them very clearly like she was one of the people that was not holding back about Manon like this is what it is and this is what she's doing and it's not fair <laughs> I don't know actually Sabrina said Emily's vocals are not the best 
And for me, she performs with too much energy that doesn't match the vibe of the other girls. See, she is, when we were doing the reaction earlier, I watched the two group performances again, and I was like, she's a center. And that's the thing with Emily. She is, you can't have her in a group and not have her in the center because she does. She stands out. She performs in a way that like is so captivating, but it doesn't blend with the other girls. Like it's just like, bitch, I'm here. So I feel like, yeah, she's made to be a solo artist or she's made to be a center. And if you want a six member group and you want all of the members to kind of equally shine, then yeah, maybe that wasn't the place for her. Okay, let me keep scrolling, skimming through these comments. You guys are all saying very, very interesting things and I want to read them all and I want to talk about them all. But we will be here all night, won't we? <laughs> Sabrina, the cat's eye girls have been media trained. They were reading the instructions before they went live and didn't realize they were already live. That's funny. Yeah, every idol has media training. That's part of being an or a celebrity or whatever. That's part of being an idol. And even if you've done a whole bunch of media training, you're still going to have your publicist with you for every single interview. And they're going to be reminding you, don't talk about this. Don't say this. Remember to do this. If you get asked this, try to answer in this way. It's just part of being a celebrity, I guess. All right. If there's anything else that's like super, super interesting or funny or interesting, interesting or funny or interesting. I've already been live for like a lot of hours today, so forgive me. My mouth has stopped working. Okay, let's start watching some stuff. Oh, we, 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 we. 